All right, Bri, I think we are all set. So as I said, thank you for first and foremost for coming out, hanging out with uh, my team here at Spillone Sports. How are you feeling today? Um, I'm feeling good, you know, a little sore, which is normal. Um, we're playing yesterday and, you know, just getting woke up today, got some treatment and trying to get the body ready for tomorrow. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, a lot of the games like back to like back to back, right? Not not a lot of gaps in between. Yeah, I mean, I think we we're the we're we have the most games out of all the teams in the league with a one day in between games. I mean, if that makes any sense. So we have a pretty tough schedule, you know, and it's it's been tough, but our support staff has been awesome and our coaches have been super understanding and we've been having to utilize film more instead of getting on the court. But, you know, it's, it's, we're making it work. Definitely. And then I'm sure having that, uh, that veteran leadership and, and someone like yourself, uh, you, you, you know, seen just about everything through the game of basketball. So I'm sure this experience has been a little different being, being in the uh-huh. bubble. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. It's definitely been a little, a little different and, it, it does, it has helped being in the league. I mean, you kind of know what to expect from certain teams, you know, you know, you know, the personnel, there are quite a few rookies in the league this year, but for the most part, you know, what you're going to be up against night in and night out, which helps in preparation in the lack of preparation that you have. So um, that's helped. And to have Dewana and some veteran players on our team, it's been, it's been really helpful. Would you compare it to, have you dealt with any other experience or atmosphere like this? I don't know, AAU tournaments or things growing up where you're kind of all like a close proximity, but in your, in your space as well. Yeah, I think we'd have to go back to high school and we're talking about team (laughs) camp or something, team camp, like, I mean, something like that, but I've never, um, since being a professional, been in a situation like this. It's, it's very unique. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and Brianna, again, I appreciate you taking the time. And, and I, I do want to talk, um, you know, a bit about just kind of everything that's going on right now, you know, in, in society, in the game. Um, we've, we've seen it across the board, uh, you know, in both the NBA and then in, in the W uh, with players coming together to, to use their platform, um, stand in unity, you know, against uh, social injustice and racism. So I, w- I would love your perspective on what you believe that first step is as a nation that that we need to take in order to put an end to racism and social injustice. You know, I, I think it's just looking at it face on for what it is. You know, I think a lot of people that haven't experienced it don't don't know how much people are being affected by racism. Um, and I think by having these conversations and, you know, making sure it's a topic that is not going away and making sure we're putting information out there on the regular for people to become educated up on what's going on is the first step. And for people to have those uncomfortable conversations. uh, And I mean, I can, I'm just so proud to be a part of a group of women in the WNBA who are dedicated and committed to being visible and outspoken in their demand for change. It's been awesome being here and just seeing everybody work towards a common goal. And and I think you hit it right on the head too, like have to be comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Having those Mm -hmm. conversations and that dialogue just to bring that awareness and, and to continue to stay educated and informed with what's happening. Right. I mean, and that's the only way that, we're going to move forward is if everybody is understands what's going on. If everybody sees what's going on, then we can, we can attack the issue. But if we have people out there who really don't understand what's going on and as a whole, we're not going to be able to move forward. Um, so I, it's going to take a lot of people getting uncomfortable and, and, you know, facing things that they might not want to face and accepting things that they don't want to accept and, and, and how proud has it made you to see fellow athletes, celebrities like yourself, you know, the leaders of, of the league to coming together to use their platforms to, you know, push for equality, voting awareness and, and, and things of that nature, um, just amplifying voices. I, I think it's huge, especially in the time right now when you have leagues going on. I mean, just being in this bubble and knowing how, how intense our schedules have been, but, and to see our players still commit to 
our goal of demanding change. You know, it, it, it takes a lot out of you, but it shows you how passionate we are about this change. And I'm, I'm super proud of everybody in that regard. But it, I mean, it, we want to keep this conversation at the forefront and it's, it's, it takes everything you have. Yeah. And I think, yeah, having those, those conversations and that awareness, even when there's not a, uh, a tragedy that occurred, right? Yes. But in, in instances, mm-hmm. like still being able to have that dialogue and to stay edu- in and to keep that awareness going, you know, even months after the fact, and and you know, uh, hopefully, no more tragedies have to arise in order for these conversations to just occur, and, and instead making it part of that, you know, daily conversation and, and things of that nature. Right, right, and I mean, unfortunately, you've seen that in the past, where you, you've seen this cycle of you know, a life lost and, you know, just the hurt that people are feeling turning into rage, turning into speaking out. And then unfortunately those, they become silenced after a while, you know, and, and then all of a sudden when the next tragedy strikes the same, we're in the same cycle. And hopefully I think we're getting to a point now where people are really, really just, I mean, I, the only word I have is, is, I mean, people are really grieving and they're hurting inside. And so I think we're getting to a point now where we can't let it go. We have to continue to speak on it because, you know, and and that's the only way we're going to get through it is if we really face it head on and get some resolve here. Right. And, and, uh, and, and speaking and, and, uh, cause the youth are always watching, right. There's always that next generation that's watching. So, um, right. for athletes and public figures like yourself to continue to use their platform and uh, even what we're trying to do on, on the sports media side, um, you know, have those messages be, um, reiterated so that it, this doesn't go away, you know, and, and mm-hmm. we're, we're able to have these topics of conversations and then, um, come together for change in that, in that common fight. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We're trying to lead the way. And you always have those people who are like, shut up and bounce the ball, blah, blah, blah. blah. But like you see the impact we've had already. We are we have a platform. And so I feel like it is our responsibility to fight for what's right. And when we step off the court, we are humans. We I mean, majority of the people that play in this league, majority of the players that play in the NBA are the people at risk. They are the people, they are part of the population that are being attacked, you know? And so we are humans and it's hurting us just like it's hurting the the rest of the population. And so I don't, I don't, and I don't think people can grasp that and it's unfortunate, but we're not going to let our platforms go to waste. And so we're going to continue to push forward. hundred percent. I love that. And, and and you mentioned that, um, this does, you know, going through these experiences and, and being individuals first and athletes second, has there ever been a time where you've personally dealt with racism in any form, whether, you know, on or off the court? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Um, Sorry to hear that. Yeah, and, 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 you know, it, 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 it's something that sticks with me to this day. I mean, I haven't, I, I haven't experienced it to the degree that a lot of people have, but back home, I was wrongfully arrested, <laughs> actually. Wow. And, you know, thankfully, I had the means to fight it and charges were dropped because it, there was no base basis behind it. Um, but there are people that aren't able to do that. And then, you know, and that stuff affects them for the rest of their lives. So, I mean... I have directly been affected by this and I have fam- family members that have as well. And so it hit, it hit, hits home for me for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that. And, um, and, and, uh, I'm glad everything was okay. But to your point also, there, there are individuals out there, right. Who may not have that common means of being able to, um, fight for that, for that justice mm-hmm. on their own end, you know? And exactly. To, yeah. And it's, uh, it's great that you're, uh, be, continuing to be a voice and it's something that you, and sadly, even though you've experienced it firsthand, you're paving the w- way and using your platform to make sure that, you know, God willing, there's a time where nobody has to go through this and experience that similar to what you had to go through in, in that regard. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what we're here fighting for. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and Bria, as I mentioned in, in the beginning of our interview, uh, just transitioning here, um, we, you know, 
that five, six years back and, and it's crazy how fast time has flown, but it's great to see you're still yeah. continuing to, to do your thing in the league. Um, mm-hmm. But, but as a veteran in, in this league now, and, and as a, uh, a terrific basketball pedigree, a WNBA championship under your belt, when you reflect back on just your career and your journey, what would you say has been the biggest life lesson that the game of basketball has taught you? Oh man, the biggest life lesson. I mean, wow. Um, I mean, there's so many, I, I mean, I can talk about being able to handle adversity, you know, in dealing with multiple injuries and coming back that way, or just, teaching me that if I continue to just keep my head down and keep working, I'll be ready for opportunities when they come my way, you know? Um, and also just to, you know, be open, be open for open to, you know, communicating with new people, learning about new people, growing, you know, continued growth. You know, that's, that's one thing that you have to have if you want to be, you know, want to be in the league for a long time, you have to continue to grow and you have to be open to that. And I was luckily, I was, I was lucky enough to play with a player like Tamika Catchings that, you know, helped me through a lot of those things. So, yeah. And and now you're able to be that uh, individual and that player to, to some of the the younger players. Right. And that's, so it does go for full circle in that regard too. 100%, 100%, you know, as, I know, I know some of the young ones get tired of me talking, but I'm not going (laughs) to let up on them. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to give up on them. You know, when you see talent, you want everybody to be successful and I'm going to continue to pour into them and try and get them to reach their highest level. And I'm, and I'm sure that's where some of that, having that coaching background too, it it probably Mm -hmm. plays a little factor, right? You're, you want to push and you want to have that untapped potential, uh, be able to, to, yeah, (laughs) get them to that point. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. And that, that's one of the reasons why I I took that time to coach is because I I was lucky enough to have coaches like that when I was in college and they're the reason why I'm here today. And for me to go go and give back to kids and help them achieve their goals whether that's on or off the court, you know, that that's the whole reason behind going back to coach. And when I'm done, I I will probably be back there coaching just because I'm super passionate about that. And, and you, and you did it at, a, of course, at a very high level, you, you playing professional basketball mm-hmm. and then, you know, helping your, your alma mater at Arizona state and, and the women's basketball program. What was mm-hmm. that just experience like for you juggling <laughs> both of those high level responsibilities? Um, I, I can't lie. It was a lot. It was, it was, it was a lot, you know, I mean, going back and coaching with my, my head coach that I played for, I know she's one of the hardest working coaches out there, you know, and that's no disrespect to anybody else, but I have seen firsthand how much time and energy she puts in to her kids and her program. And when you're working under a a coach like that, it, it inspires you to do the same. And so I was giving all of me into coaching and it was tough to balance me getting my workouts in and me giving all that I could um, to my kids and to the program. Um, and it was exhausting, but I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, after those two years though, I, I knew I loved coaching and I knew it was something that I'd want to do long-term, but while I'm playing, I want to be 100% in it. And unfortunately it didn't allow me to do that. And so I'm here now playing overseas and playing in the WNBA, just in soaking up every second of being a professional athlete. And when the time comes again, I will be back to coaching because I, that fills me up just as much as being on the court does. And, and that's great to hear because, you know, obviously in the midst of, of still your career and, and playing at a high level, but also having that opportunity to get that experience, just coaching, mm-hmm. knowing, Hey, this is something else I'm very passionate about. Um, did it give you a, a, a greater appreciation for some of the coaches that, uh, you know, you've had throughout your life? Cause you're like, got to literally be in their shoes. Oh, 100%, yeah. <laughs> 100%. And I know how lucky I am. Um, I've had, I mean, you start, I can start back in high school with my high school coach, Jim Redman, and then being able to play under Charlie Turner Thorne at ASU and then getting drafted by Lynn Dunn and being coached by Steph White I have been extremely lucky with 
the coaches I've had. They've just been phenomenal role models and they've shown me how to be a great coach. And um, I definitely have pulled I pulled a lot of what I, of who I am and who I was as a coach from them. But, um, I, I, when I tore my ACL, I was actually able to sit in on a lot of the coaches meetings with Lynn Dunn and in the staff that was there. Um, and from that moment, I saw how much preparation it took, how much time, how much thought went into every day, every day preparation for our team, just thinking it at, from every angle. And so I was able to see how much work was put in at, uh, at least at the pro level. And then when you go to college, it's, it's a whole nother ball game when you have to throw in recruiting and traveling and, you know, taking care of their children, <laughs> you know, at that, right. at that level. So it, it, it is a lot, it is a lot. And coaches do put a lot of work in and I respect all the coaches out there. Cause I know it's not easy, but you know, you can tell they really love it because if you're willing to put in that much work, you have to love what you do. Truly. Yeah. And, and the same thing for, for being an athlete too, right. Putting in that, mm-hmm. that constant dedication to come back year in, year out, taking care of your body. Um, and as you continue to get older, I'm sure there's so many other facets you just continue to add to your, to your arsenal to, uh, to have that longevity, like you've been uh, fortunate to have. Yeah. I'm trying, yeah. trying. There's a bunch of these kids out here running fast. I have to do what I can <laughs> to keep up, you know, <laughs> we don't underestimate yourself though. We know you're still, you're still out there hustling. We've, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. I still got oh, yeah. a little juice in the tank for sure. <laughs> Um, but, uh, but Bri, I, I did want to just briefly touch just, just a couple more questions for you here before we let you go. I know you got a, a lot still on, on the schedule and the agenda, but, um, uh, I know you did unfortunately, um, have to deal with the coronavirus firsthand. So, so yeah. dealing with that disease and overcoming it, defeating it, what was that process like and what helped you push through? Man, um, it was tough and it, it just, it sucked because leading up to the WNBA season, I was being extremely careful and, you know, thoughtful about where I was and, you know, just kind of navigating everyday life. And it, it was really tough being out in Arizona where our numbers were spiking, you know, spiking still pretty, pretty high now, but it, you know, it was, it was just tough to kind of be safe in that environment. But once I was sick, it, it, It took a lot out of me, but luckily my team here has been phenomenal. The organization, you know, just the way they were checking in on me, the way my teammates were just lifting me up, checking in, seeing if I was okay, you know, and continuing to push forward, you know, wanting, getting, getting back on the court really gave me something to push for, you know, and I knew, you knew, I knew I I had faith in my body that I was healthy enough to fight off this disease, but even being a healthy, you know, a healthy body, it, it knocked me out. It it did. It put me on my butt for like a week. And I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones who was able to, to be a survivor because I know there's a lot of people out there that have not won that fight and that are still struggling with it. But I, I had a tremendous support staff that helped me through and, and encouraged me and, you know, supported me through that whole time. We're, we're, uh, extremely, um, glad to hear that you didn't make a full recovery. And while we were, uh, sad, it was unfortunate to hear that you had, um, dealt with that virus firsthand. We're, uh, mm-hmm. we're, we're really glad that you made a full recovery and that you're full on, full on healthy and back to doing what you enjoy. So, um, thank you for, for sharing that. I know it's going to be a tough <laughs> also story to kind of discuss, but, um, we we're glad that you're, you know, back at it hundred percent now. Same. It was, it was a tough go getting back in there. The, the, the whole getting back in the game shape, the breathing, you know, it was, it was tough for a little bit, but you know, when I got out here, the facilities, we have everything we need to get into basketball shape and maintain the way we need to. And, you know, you know, my family was huge in that as well, just supporting me and encouraging me every step of the way. Yeah. We're, we're glad to hear. And then, yeah, the, uh, like you hit on, I think getting cardio, right. Keeping, keeping the mm-hmm. blood pumping in the heart, <laughs> getting, getting back right. to game shape. It's uh, Man. uh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, uh, Brian, our, our final question for you. So you have seen the league transcend over the years, and uh, you've played alongside some of the game's most elite players. But what are your thoughts on the new CBA and then the future state of the W? Um, I am 
I mean, across the board, I'm just so proud of our league and our executive committee, uh, the way they fought for, you know, our players and the time and the energy that they put in, because I know it wasn't easy in going through and going into those negotiations, but they were fighting for us and being in the league for 12 years now, geez, I, I'm not even going to age myself like that, but just every year by year, seeing the talent improve, you know, the, just every year, I feel like the level of play is, is, is improving and I'm excited for the future and I'm excited to, you know, to see where this league goes because right now it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough to be a professional women's basketball player and playing year round and being away from your family almost year round because when right. you're overseas you can't see them and during the season when you're traveling you're not really seeing them it, it is a tough go but we have a bunch of ladies that are passionate about what they're doing and for them to be able to get paid for what you know all the work that we put in uh, it, it's it's encouraging and it's gonna you know it's it's only going to support this league and help us get better yeah a, a bright future for the league for sure i think all those steps and, and um, you know, whether it was salary or mental health resources and, right. and just taking mm -hmm. those steps is big time. Yeah. Right. And either, even for, you know, just for women and if you want to have a family later and just having that support and it, it, there's so many things that, I mean, we are so different than the NBA and we can't tailor our, our, our CBA after theirs because we deal with different issues and for them to recognize that and see us for who we are as an individual league, it was, it was huge. Yeah, and uh, we're we're so thrilled, and it was players like yourself who helped, you know, catalyst that, and 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 uh, the players that came before you, players you played alongside, and, and you're paving that way for for the future generations. Uh, and that's yeah. that's incredible. So, um, Brianne January, it's always a pleasure catching up with you. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us here at Splone Sports. Uh, we wish you the best as you you know finish up the season, heading back into the bubble. And uh, we hope to cross paths with you in the coming years um, in, in person, hopefully, and, and if yeah, not, right. <laughs> up with you uh, virtually as well. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You also. All right, bye. Bye.